My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. Welcome back, everybody, to the next episode of Kangi's Podcast, where today we have the lovely KFWK. Good afternoon. There he is, and we love the lovely Pommy with us. Hello, hello. Uh, but always, we've got producer Scruff. Hello. And the noisy one, me, Engi. Uh, how are we all doing? Doing all right. You? Everyone else? <laughs> yeah, doing okay, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think so. So today we're talking generally things, all, all things RPG, and in a way, kind of what they mean and what they've become over the years, because if you look at most games now, as we'll get into, mm -hmm. every game almost has RPG mechanics at this point, but not everyone would call every game an RPG. So, you know, we're just going to have a general discussion about RPGs and mm -hmm. our history with them and go from there. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Looking forward to it. So I think that, personally, I think one of the best questions to kick this entire thing off is, what would you say would be your first like, memory of an RPG? For me, it was definitely like Breath of Fire or Final Fantasy, but that's because I'm a nerd. Um, but, you know, what, what, about, what about your guys? What was your uh, introduction to the RPG genre? Um probably um final fantasy 7 and pokemon i think sort of remembering back to my uh my, my childhood in the original yeah i game think Boy. yeah i think mine like uh mine as well would be final fantasy 7 i mean i completely missed the boat on pokemon like everything pokemon but yeah final fantasy 7 on the uh og ps1 was my first ever rpg uh, for myself, I, 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 I'm going to be echoing this. Uh, my first one I took seriously was Final Fantasy VII, but I had experience with RPGs in the past. Uh, again, I, I missed the boat on Pokemon uh, for, for the reasons I've said before that I, I was just in that weird age bracket where, you know, I was, I was too old to think it was cool. Um, but my first was a lot with games like Ultima. I never actually completed them, and I've never played for more than five minutes, but like old, old computer classics like Ultima. I can't even. I think it was Ultima Six. I tried, and oh my, oh my goodness, that was so overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you want brutal difficulty, try try them games. Woof. Uh, what were they called again? The Ultima games. Ultima games, yeah. I'm genuinely going to write that down because I want to look yeah. into them afterwards. So I'd like oh. to know more. I don't want to play oh. them. It's just I'll, I'll read into what they were like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in the vein of hard RPGs, give them. Um, <laughs> Kingsfield look as well. Oh since yes, you're in the. Uh... <laughs> they're they're just as nasty. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm not sure which is worse, that or Kings, uh, that or Ultima. Sorry, both are nasty in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these these were these were pre Baldur's Gate one. You know RPGs. These oh, were fair. yeah, and uh, so the Dungeons and Dragons label had been going on for a while with uh, SSI. But I'm going to go into a bit of a history lesson here with computer RPGs. Hope you don't mind. So, uh, no, uh, during the late 80s, early 90s, Strategic Simulations Incorporated had the Dungeons and Dragons license, and they made a bunch of uh, Dungeons and Dragons games called, I believe, called um, the Gold Box Collection. Now we had um, Eye of the Beholder, Dragon Lance games like these. These were brutally hard games, but loved because they used advanced Dungeons and Dragons mechanics, right. and. Uh, it wasn't until Bioware took the realm and created Baldur's Gate that really skyrocketed what a computer RPG can do. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, Ultima came around, it was around the sort of same time, literally programmed by one guy, the, fir the first one was, and it just grew and grew and grew. And yeah, oh, okay. it became, became, became classics, yeah. So that, that that's where the uh, CRPG comes from, those humble roots. All, all of which are now available on GOG, by the way. <laughs> So, so they've not been lost the time. They are now available on, to, to play on modern machines, which is, which oh, is nice. great. Do you know what? I generally, genuinely had to Google um, Baldur's Gate 1 then when you said Bioware. I was like, that doesn't sound right. But yeah, no. Sure, sure as... Um, yep, early Bioware. Wow, that's wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's uh, spun me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Like I expect it to be like Blackstone Isles or something, you know, the guys mm. behind the original Fallout or to be in that mm -hmm. sort of... I didn't think it had been Bioware. It's, not, it's of course not Bioware of today. It's, it's gone through like well, multiple yeah. companies and... Yeah. But yeah, it was one of Bioware's first... So w when they say that they they have a pedigree of RPGs, yes, they do. Until they made Andromeda. 
well, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll not get into like <laughs> publisher mandated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, we just discussed sort of RPGs of old, but and you know, like, as I said, when we counted as in um, RPGs of today have a infinitely different wild set of specifications. I think. Um, yes, because effectively RPG stands for role playing game. We all know that. Everyone that's annoyed, annoyed a nerd knows that. <laughs> yep. Um, but in essence, if you look at any game, you are playing a role in a game. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you want to play Devil's Advocate, technically every game, regardless of what you're playing, is mm. an RPG. Yeah, where you're playing a character in a game, mm -hmm. like where they have a like the there is a character that has a name and. Uh, like an avatar essentially like you are now playing that character it doesn't mm -hmm. mean ma like matter that you're making all the decisions that character is the one interacting with that mm -hmm. world and therefore playing in that role so yeah mm -hmm. you are just even if it's kind of railroady you are still playing a role mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean that, that's purely spitting hairs and being um oh, yeah. splitting yeah. But, splitting but classically a role-playing game was you you, you with protagonist, you made all the decisions. You weren't railroaded on the plot. You could skew off the plot if you wanted to, on the on the pen and paper. And yeah. a lot of things but... have tried and almost got there, but you know, uh, you are you are still essentially railroaded on the plot. Whichever computer, computer, uh, I'm, I'm doing the quotation marks. Computer role playing game you're playing, you are railroaded on the plot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we have to look at what the mechanics of we would you say of an rpg game are in it for example leveling skills having stats stuff like that. Are, they, are they are they the essentials of an art role playing you know are they the essentials of an rpg i mean reckon? i would i would say like i definitely w would say i don't know if they should be but i definitely mm -hmm. think that um basically if you have like a leveling system and especially a skill tree that very much constitutes what people would say is an RPG, a modern RPG, mm -hmm. um, which is why now, like, the, uh, like RPG is such can be such a broad spectrum mm -hmm. in regards to games that are out there. Because, like, originally, like RPG would be kind of more like catered towards like a more medieval sword mm -hmm. and sorcery type mm -hmm. feel. But then you have games like Fallout where you're playing a character and you have these skill trees, mm -hmm. and then one of then you'd had the like loot a shooter rpgs like borderlands that did so incredibly well where mm -hmm. they had skill trees that genuinely made a difference to the way you played the game or at least you interacted with yes. your combat um so yeah i think essentially now like i say it's it's skill trees leveling essentially giving the player um, the ability to uh bespoke their character that they are playing mm -hmm. yeah there is avenue they might not obviously they'll they'll be railroaded obviously to a point mm. with the story with a like you say a, a computer rpg mm -hmm. a video game rpg mm. because you can't deviate as much as you could do on like say pen and paper because you haven't got an active dm there like mm -hmm. rewriting all the code as you <laughs> see fit to explore the world um panicking between sessions because you haven't <laughs> gone where the, you were meant to go um but you can change how your in, your character interacts with world, and I think that might that's probably another key thing. Um, mm -hmm. Like again, with things like Bethesda games and any game where you have sort of conversation options that genuinely make a difference down the line with allies, adversaries, or even just little bits and pieces that affect the world as you make choices within it. I am just going to backpedal, and you said about predominantly fantasy RPGs as like your turn-based tactic uh, affairs. That's not always been the case. This is it, it, don't be wrong. It's been a niche area, and it's one of those if you knew it's where to look. Definitely where it started, it. but it's but not. You had stuff like um, Fantasy Star. You know, they yeah. were on the old eight bits, and that was a sci-fi slash medieval. But it, you know, it kind of it towed the line in between the two. Like it still had that oh, sci-fi yeah. element. Then you oh. had um, what was the other one? And it's one, I, uh, Star I, Ocean. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I, I can go further back because I'm going to bring up Ultima 1 again. Ultima 1 was a weird mishmash. It was set in a fantasy world, like, but then you could pick up things like phasers and lightsabers, and at one point you stole a spaceship to fight TIE fighters and say, I'm not making this up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really weird mishmash. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to think, the more you talk about Ultima, 
that mm-hmm. a lot of these weird sci-fi RPGs I enjoy, they've actually <laughs> taken inspiration from that. You, you, you'd be surprised. If you deep dive into the into the Ultima games, on, there are plenty of video essays out there, you, you will discover, mm. oh my goodness, the, the, these things have been around, around for years. Yeah, well, I mean, like <laughs> Fantasy Star, like, yeah. one of their main things is beam sabers and lasers. Mm-hmm. Like, just immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess probably I I I guess probably off the back of you probably say like this. Obviously, the D and D setting is a very medieval sort of base setting, mm-hmm. and then because mm-hmm. of good and then obviously bad publicity that it got in like the eighties, the whole satanic panic thing. Mm. I guess that like this whole role playing genre, the face of it became sort of D and fantasy mm-hmm. so even though the the sci-fi the sci like science fantasies have been around for just as long the face of rpgs became fantasy because of how many eyes were on essentially D D that would yeah. never usually even know it existed but because of all the sort of drummed up attention that it got in the media in that time a lot more people were aware of this. If someone said an RPG or, or something like that, anybody would say like D and D, which, like I said, is like that sort of mm-hmm. fantasy setting. So that could explain why sort of people might think that it's like where it's predominantly takes its roots. When actually, it's arguably takes its roots in in science fantasy just as much. Yeah, well, I was just thinking about anything that changes your story. Like Baldur's Gate does it so well. It sort of if you with your decisions, it sort of changes parts of the future story although it obviously has like the main the main storyline there is loads of different effects so i think personally sort of rpg whereas it's where your decisions like really directly affect everything Mm -hmm. because i didn't realize that rpg had such a broad spectrum like i was looking i didn't realize horizon zero dawn was classed as an rpg to me that was just a a fight that's that's exactly what i'm saying yeah it has a skill tree it has a leveling system yeah technically class now as an rpg despite being an open world but then yeah. every triple a game at the moment and it's a, it's a problem and it's a plague every triple a game does the everything open world explore rpg side and it tries to do the everything to appeal to the everyone yeah um, uh, that is horizons pro- well not horizons problem it's a triple a game problem me, me and a uh, another uh streamer talked about this like a while ago now because uh he'd been playing horizon um and now like uh, you were saying with the the sort of the, the problem with it is that because there are these essentially like tick boxes for what constitutes like an RPG or the big like buzzwords in the AAA like industry, they'll do things with games like Horizon and stuff like that where they make these enormous maps. So to obviously give you probably more of a feel of you can just go and kind of go where you want essentially. You're like, right, cool, I'm going to go over that way. And it's a long way out and a totally different like almost biome but then if you're just kind of doing that to make it filler it's not as an enjoyable experience as if you'd actually just kept it on a smaller scale you can still have a good rpg on a smaller map you make the world live and breathe and genuinely be affected by your choices not make them a lip service of when like oh you can make this choice or that choice and then it doesn't matter at the end unless you're making a point that it doesn't mm-hmm. matter because there are some games where you have choices and stuff and the whole point of it is to tell you that it doesn't matter what happens you always end up here uh bioshock infinite did that mm-hmm. um whereas you had with the other bioshock games you had the choices the choice of like what happened with the little sisters mm-hmm. but in infinite doesn't matter any of your choices you always have the same ending but that was the point that infinite was trying to say is that all roads lead here um in that game but yeah, if you just put like arbitrary choices in games for players that then don't do anything, then again, it's it's the same as making a massive open world and not putting anything in it. Just because you've made a big world and it takes 100 hours to play, if it's a boring 100 hours, people are still not going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Hey, but listen, it's Star Wars Outlaws, just saying. Mm. I mean... Uh... Yeah, it, 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 some cases. I mean, I remember there being a huge open world, like I'm gonna say, play, a, 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 epidemic, where all, all games were massive open worlds. That I yearned for a curated story. <laughs> yeah, I I, I went in, into a linear story and I loved it because I was so starved for a curated story where I didn't have to go collect like 50 leaves or something. Do you know, what, yeah. it's, it, 
what you were saying about the big open worlds and more compact stories that's weirdly to again depending on the rpg for example Baldur's gate huge world go do lots of things explore lots of things but you can also follow the main path mm -hmm. on the opposite side of the spectrum we had sea of stars um again i i mean i've i've been i know scruff you've beaten it as well yeah um I would argue that is an extremely linear story, mm -hmm. but it's so well crafted, it yeah, doesn't it, matter. It's so well curated, yeah. Mm. Like, don't get wrong, there are points you get to veer off the path and explore mm -hmm. and do all these mm -hmm. things. In fact, to get the true ending, you have to veer off and explore, yeah. which was a brilliant idea. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a small, it was compact, it was exactly what it wanted to be. It was still an RPG. Mm -hmm. You still had your skills, you still had your leveling system, your equipment loadout, your team, comps, everything. But it was a small a world at smaller world sorry mm -hmm. and it didn't feel bloated like everything that was in the game felt it was there for a reason and it was just it was great mm -hmm. yeah um, i like that i, I like uh, especially if you're going to have like a game uh, let, let's put this in like big quotation of rpg as it covers so much um but yeah i unless it's kind of the point because like i know it's kind of it that it's the kind of uh, it's the shtick of like Final Fantasy games to have these like weird fetch quests happening in the middle of these mm -hmm. epic storylines. But yeah, if you break up your big storyline mm. with too much arbitrary stuff that doesn't really make sense to the story, um, it's going to keep cutting players out of the the story beats um, and thus making it a lesser of an experience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my example of a, a game that did that really well, I felt, uh, was the first Infamous game on the PS3, um, because all of the side quests in that made sense for what the character was experiencing um, during the uh, events of the game. Uh, they all made sense to furthering his character. I mean, yes, you were getting levels and you were able to unlock abilities and stuff and that was a drive to do it but it all made also made sense that the character was doing it as well um so you never lost sight of the story because even the side quests were kind of tied to the, to the main story and i thought they did that really really well and again that's not a big it's not a big map it's three separate like islands like it was originally um put out on the ps3 so not exactly the biggest of processing powers compared to like the ps5 and mm -hmm. like gaming pcs now and stuff like that but yeah they did it really well um again having like a fairly compact map but they made it live and breathe and the, it's one of the games where i liked the karma system because again it made a difference to, um in choices that your character made and stuff and then how the world reacted to it because like in that world if you're if you'll uh, get really good karma the general pedestrians who are out in the streets when you start fighting bad guys will start like picking up and throwing rocks at the bad guys and helping you but if you go the other way and become infamous and you're a real sort of you go down the real dark path you do get obviously better skills because it's always the way in video games uh but then when you're fighting the general bad dudes like all of the pedestrians will start throwing rocks and sticks at you and like screaming at you to leave because uh you've because of the choices that you've made so i think that was it's a good way of doing it but you can do it just so badly a lot of the times and that's what sometimes some of these games do mm. there's been a lot of times where i've, I've seen a leveling system in game and go, why does this exist i think fable was my first experience of like the karma type stuff mm. Mm. fable fable 3 i think it was is it yeah three? yeah it, that it, was my it, first experience of karma in yeah. games yeah and the first game is still the best and i will die on that hill <laughs> <laughs> yeah see my introduction to fable was fable 2 um and I oh, absolutely fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely adored it. Uh, but I came to Fable late because like, I came once Fable 2 had been out for a while. So I completely missed the boat on Fable 1. Mm. I didn't play Fable until the third one. Ah. So I missed all of, of that joy. That. It was the last like Project Lionhead did before they um, got bought out. Did they get bought or did they... I'm not sure. Because Lionhead before making Fable actually worked on... Uh, was it Black and White? I'm yes. sure it was Black and White. Yes, uh, where you was a benevolent hand of God, <laughs> and again, you could be an altruistic God, or you can just be an absolute jerk. <laughs> so they actually like they started that. their karma system with it before Fable. I heard good things about Black and White. It's good. Is it's, that an, it's an enjoyable time? It, it, it's a mm, God simulator, I'd say. Yeah, it's like a weird blend between kind of a God sim builder and a little RPG in it as well. 
It's Carnival 3. It's really strange. Mm -hmm. I haven't described what an RPG is, you know, leveling skills, medieval things. It was like, I was thinking the other day, it's like, that case, can the Legend of Zelda series, because I was editing, editing the podcast, can that be considered an RPG series? You don't... The, Zelda... Uh, Zelda Link only really levels up his art. He doesn't level up any skills. He gains equipment. Can that be considered oh. a role-playing game? I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'd argue, like, especially like on the surface, like an on the surface answer would be mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think, like, if you dig down in it, they, probably if you spent enough time digging down into it, you could probably argue that possibly not. Okay, so um, we, we, I would we, say no because using the rules of Zelda, you can argue that Metroid is an RPG because you only the character Samus only gains uh, health level up. While she gains equipment as she goes through the story. Yeah, see that like, <laughs> like that's what I'm saying in the fact that you have like gear that makes the character stronger, yeah, not yeah. necessarily the character themselves get stronger. Yeah. But again, because of that big wide umbrella of RPG, mm -hmm. uh, like I want to say like very very like off the like off the cuff, I would have said like yes. But if I really thought about it and I had a real discussion with someone who knew like the series inside out and things yeah. like that i could very easily I, I think be persuaded to say no because i'm mm -hmm. i'm not confident in that answer i genuinely <laughs> thought that zelda was considered an rpg okay Tell me why i'm wrong absolutely not okay so zelda is 100 percent <laughs> action adventure um I, I see where you're coming from with the air quote leveling with by gaining more hearts i i, I can get that i get the logic um, but it is definitely action adventure because there's a lot of just, um, you know, you do the dungeons, effectively you treat your dungeons as levels. You go in, you do a level, you beat it, you get a new toy to play with, you do the next place, crack on, rinse, repeat, end. There's there's effectively no leveling up, it's just you gain more health to deal with things that are going to hit you harder. And that that's kind of it. I would say that there's good reason for Pommy thinking that because of how broad of a genre now is RPG. Mm -hmm. And... Is it not? It's not necessarily that there are games. Obviously, some games do still have elements that uh, routes that you can follow back to, to RPGs. But with the way the mechanics have then been incorporated into other games, it's kind of been essentially the term RPG has been used in relation to games that have also had this. So now any game that has that feature, even though that's not necessarily an RPG feature, but is a, um, has been included enough with it, has now come under that umbrella. And I think that's the thing, is that RPG has become such this broad term now because mm. people have used it, I guess, probably as a kind of marketing sort of thing uh, to appeal to people who like as like uh, like bare, not bare bones but they like rpgs and then yeah to try and get more people interested it's calling anything that has this quality or that quality as an rpg but it's not doesn't really actually have its roots in original rpgs it's almost uh, if you know um, if, if, if it's a medieval action game or it's instantly classed as an rpg because it looks like an rpg it's supposed to be an rpg where in fact it's, it could be you know just a simple action game whereas you know a game like um Cyberpunk, which looks like a first-person shooter, feels like a first-person shooter, but it's actually an in-depth RPG with skim many skills. You know that could be easily construed. Well, yeah, you know, it's it's the term has been mu muddled and muddied and changed and the pushed only and pulled and twisted. So the, the, the only country to me that has retained, like, if someone says to me, "New RPGs come out," immediately I will think turn-based action mm. stats gear sweet mm -hmm. what is it and i would argue that the only country that seems to actually retain that when they make an rpg is yep. japan yep i was yeah. you know, completely agree with you there and you know don't get me wrong like they do obviously they make a hell of a lot of rpgs mm -hmm. look at square enix alone they've got obviously they've got the final fantasies under the belt which are leaning more and more away from rpgs every entry goes mm -hmm. um then we've got the octopath spin-offs we've got the brave the defaults um Dragon We've got the Dragon Quests, you know, and that's that's just all under Square mm -hmm. and Enix and whatever other names they decide to change <laughs> to eventually. Um, <laughs> but but it's like as you said, you know, when someone says, "Oh, brand new RPGs come out," I will look at a video first. Be like, right, what do you mean by RPG? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Because I know what RPG <laughs> to me means, and I should say everyone else will have something different. Because in the same vein as well, like if someone said RPG and like, oh yeah, it's blah blah blah, I'm like, oh okay, cool. 
but to someone else they were like oh it's a jrpg purely because it's anime yeah. it's like well yeah. in essence any rpg that comes from japan is technically a jrpg but that's again splitting hairs yeah but just because it's anime they're like oh that that was definitely jrpg it's anime i'm like most rpgs come from japan like, yeah <laughs> it's like the uh holding a plucked chicken up and calling it a man argument yeah <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> I mean, the main the main thing with JRPG, at least between the people I know, when someone says JRPG, the main difference between that and what they mean by a normal RPG is that there's more control as opposed to turn based. It's more action orientated. A bit like I'm gonna say, it, Star Ocean. Of course, it's gonna be Star Ocean. Mm -hmm. That's classed as a JRPG because it's not. I mean, it is kind of term. You can you know pause it and flip between your characters, make them do what you want, or you can just run around and mash your buttons that you've set to skills and use it as an actual you know like a action RPG. game effectively yeah. yeah yeah but with a bunch of rpg behind it yeah and usually when people say jrpg or at least when i hear jrpg and that's what they're talking to me about I'm like oh so you mean it's kind of like this they're like yeah exactly that that's yeah. just a jrpg isn't it i'm like well kind of like yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's basically that's that's why it's why it's become the way that it is now is it's just, mm. it's just like i said it's 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 been coined as an advertising term therefore everything's got put under the umbrella like i said so many things now come under the uh, under the umbrella mm. of rpg and i think it, it's just that's what people think that it is now because yeah. that's that's the examples that they've got and again this this actually goes back to the not that I'm going to send you down the full wormhole again, Scruff, but mm -hmm. that kind of goes back to what you were saying about maintaining like old games and stuff like that. Because some of them, obviously, like bigger franchises and ones that were more loved and like had more backing and things might be saved and converted and blah, blah, blah. But some will be just gone. So you can't physically go to someone like this is this was what an RPG started out as. This was the roots of RPG because some of those are gone now. They've lo they, they've been lost, like they said, to the um, binary of time. Mm. Oh, yeah. I imagine there's there's stuff that people have kept hold of because of their sort of love for it and mm -hmm. things like that if you go looking for it but that again that's not something that the average now video game especially consumer would know where to access or even know about it probably its existence on the face value of a, of a sort of video gamer now uh, sort of looking at games they like you'll have games up there that like i said like as we've just been discussing zelda under the rpg kind of bracket and they won't have examples of anything else so it's evolved it's forcibly you could argue <laughs> but it has evolved and it kind of makes again, sense to, to throw another uh, another shift in reverse just because i can two zelda games in essence are almost rpgs thinking about it mm -hmm. yeah cool it's the horror warriors games yeah, they're, they're, they're the most RPG games you ask. Yeah. You skills mm -hmm. and different paths you can take. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 they are just Warriors games, mm -hmm. but there's a leveling system. <laughs> yeah, leveling yeah. system. <laughs> and they are, in a way, kind of action RPGs, except just being, you know, they are straight up just Musu games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're probably the most closest thing. Yeah, I've never, I've not played those games. Yeah, I used to be a big uh, Dynasty Warriors fan back in the day. They did, they also did, just so I can talk about it for a, a minute is uh <laughs> they did the berserk band of the hawk game yes like one of those um genuinely like if you haven't like if you didn't like the weird animated series that they did of berserk um play that game because mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a really good adaptation of some of the manga yeah um genuinely really good <laughs> um and, and the uh, if you've watched that series this will look amazing to you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, they did that, which was quite a fun game. But again, I've kind of had my time with those sorts of games. I had them yeah. back in my, my early 20s, and I've just kind of got a bit bored with them because it's like, yeah. it's fun, but um, it's, yeah, it's, I found it's... out I like I like a good story in a game a lot of the time. Man cannot um, survive on bread alone sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's where they've definitely changed the formula because I fell out of Dynasty around number seven. Because mm. at, at number seven, I was like, they're just rehashing this. I'm bored of the same Dynasty Warriors story at this point. Um, but that's what I appreciate about the Fire Emblem one and the 
I mean, you said about the Berserk one, there was also a Fist of the North Star one. That was yes. awesome. Oh, yes, there was. Um, the One Piece one is, if you've watched everything, then it might not appeal to you as much. It's a if you've numbers. wanted to watch everything yeah. about One Piece, but you don't have the time or patience to watch a thousand plus episodes, you play the One Piece Pirate Warriors games, you get the story from the start up to wherever that current game ended in the relative timeline of how much had been released off the content. So like, I think number four takes you... Yeah, number four currently, plus its DLC, takes you as close from the start of the game to the finale as it currently is. But I, I wager in a couple of years we'll get Pirate Warriors 5, and then it'll just be the whole thing, again, up to whatever point is at. Yeah. But then the Zelda one, the Zelda one had its own storyline, which we talked about last mm -hmm. episode, actually. Yeah, a uh, couple of episodes ago now. Uh, but they also did a Persona one, didn't they, Strikers, which did break the formula. Yes, and that was a sleep. sequel as well, wasn't it? Yes, it was a sequel to Persona 5, one of the longest RPGs I played on stream. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. He got that mad that he went quiet at the end. <laughs> <laughs> no microphone can contain Scruff's rage. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed my time of it, but again, Persona had the DNA of an RPG. It's like, mmm. Oh, Persona is 100% an RPG. Yeah, it's like, a JRPG, uh, but it's like, it was, it was, it was like a JRPG anime. It really was. Ooh, there was so I mean, much, so many cutscenes. Any other times. points we would uh, wish to cover? I know, I know you enjoy playing Red Dead too. Would you consider that a role playing game? I was just about to talk about this actually, because mm -hmm. there's a shock. Like, yeah. <laughs> Look, I went. I was thinking about talking about it half an hour ago, so I've been, I've, I've been holding off. But mainly because I'd thought of this point with what we were talking about. Yeah. Red Dead, is, Red Dead Two, especially, is a prime example of a game that isn't technically an RPG from its roots, but everyone looks at it as an RPG, mm -hmm. and. I honestly don't know how confident <laughs> I'd feel saying it's definitely an RPG because going back to its roots, it's not. Because even though your character levels up, you have no choice in really how that works. It's just basically kind of how like other games have done it, but in a, a, a smaller thing like the old um, Elder Scrolls games where like you do a thing and that gets you more experience mm -hmm. in doing that thing. So you have that in the three main abilities like your health, your stamina and your uh, your dead eye, which level up as you use them and you can find things that level up. But it's not like you, you've got skills that um, you can swap in and out or you can select to have. Again, you do have more skills like your dead eye has a couple of different states that it's in before it gets to like it's uh, the final like way that you can use it towards the end of the game. But all of that happens just as you progress through the game. You don't level anything up essentially, but you do get XP. And again, just because you get XP in a game, don't make it an RPG. <laughs> but it does have XP in it. So and it does have an open world that does, in fairness, does is affected by your choices. Because again, what red dead does without spoiling it all roads do lead to what happens at the end of chapter six uh but red dead tries to kind that's kind of the point mm. um that the story makes is trying to make about the character um but you do have choices and stuff that you make that do affect the world because different people interact with you in different ways and stuff but yeah, I like. I I don't think I could hand on heart say like it is an RPG because it has RPG roots. Because I'd argue that it's not. I'd argue in modern terms it was an RPG, definitely. But if we were to cut it back to its roots, I I wouldn't say that it was. Again, just because something levels up and you get XP doesn't make it an RPG. Just putting XP on the end of something mm -hmm. that you like, essentially a power up doesn't make it rpg xp because you as the player don't get any choice on where that xp gets spent um, i mean i'd agree you... and in the same vein is why i as much as i enjoy final fantasy 16 is not an rpg 100 yeah. percent not an rpg see i haven't played 16 so i have no idea what it's like 16 is more akin to say uh death may cry okay yeah. it's, it's probably the only way i can mm -hmm. describe it <laughs> like, a, a hack and slash wrong. with the story yeah 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 and a leveling system yeah 
a leveling system that doesn't mean anything as well. Oh, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> like your yeah, stats least... and stuff. I swear down, your stats and stuff go up, but as long as your number matches the enemies, you're fine. That's so, it. Yeah. He's saying that Devil May Cry has a better leveling system than Final Fantasy 16. Because <laughs> Devil May Cry's leveling system lets you learn new moves and new combos. Do you know what? The thing is, they both do the same thing. Ah. So in Devil May Cry, you earn the red orbs to mm -hmm. unlock new yeah. things. In 16, you kill enemies, you earn ability points, <laughs> and then you can put them into the abilities of your summons mm. to give you right. different attacks. You can make them stronger. You can also take them back out and rework them whenever you feel like it. But it's definitely not an RPG. <laughs> At least I yeah. don't consider it an RPG. Nah. No way. Yeah. Absolutely not. I, I would say, though, that I, I would probably say Devil May Cry was probably... Yeah. I, I think I could say that Devil May Cry was definitely uh, my gateway into appreciating RPGs. Mm. Uh, because as we were saying at the top, like our first RPG experience, my first RPG experience was Final Fantasy VII. I did not play that like an RPG because I'd never played one before. I had no idea what it was like. When I first had it, I had one of the first PS1s which had forked memory slots. Oof. So I couldn't save my game. So every time I played Final Fantasy VII for like a month, I, I'd started it from the <laughs> beginning again. <laughs> 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 Until we managed to get like the like the game store to acknowledge that the ports were knackered. Um, Me, my... <laughs> but uh but yeah they i didn't play that game like an rpg i kind of lost interest in it um didn't enjoy it i did however go back and play og final fantasy 7 back in 2020 um through the ps store and i loved it mm -hmm. i had so much fun playing it properly um which essentially shows how like my taste and um i mean if, my... if you think seven's good play nine nine will blow your socks off i have uh did i play nine no, I played so eight. Eight. so good, so good. The weird little monkey boy. <laughs> hey, don't you don't you smack talk, my boy? <laughs> Is it nine like the black sheep? <laughs> oh, I didn't realise that. Maybe you said that nine's nine. the black sheep. Isn't it no. the one that lots of people complain about? And but actually, no. it's quite good. No, 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 no. no nine, nine. Was, nine was a return to form. So it, it really wanted to hark back uh... to the older games. So they had chibi characters and. You could see mm -hmm. all the party all the time. So like one to five was very well. One to four, what should I will say, was very fantasy roots. Five started adding in a bit more steampunk. Six went way more into steampunk. Mm -hmm. uh, seven then added sci-fi to it. Eight continued that, and then nine was like, nope, back to fantasy. Right. S scrap the sci-fi stuff. We're going back to fantasy again, and it was, oh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then Tang came around and I was like, no, we're bringing sci-fi back in again. Oh, okay. I was enjoying the not sci-fi stuff, but okay, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> and they've done the same thing again. Because if you look at them all, we got um, 10, 10 2. They went the sci-fi route-ish, mm -hmm. or sci-fi-esque route. <clears throat> uh, 11 was the MMO, went back to fantasy. 12 was fantasy. 13, and it's two... Okay, Sequels, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, also sci-fi, and then yeah. fifteen had less sci-fi but more fantasy, and then sixteen just went straight fantasy. Yeah, oh, it's fine. like a wave. You can almost chart it, can't you? How yeah. sci-fi to fantasy. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, you really can. Okay, so Pommy, your main <laughs> RPG. Just, I know we're, we're nearing the end, but you've been <laughs> fairly quiet, little Pommelby. Um, <laughs> what have been your like your your main RPG? Tickles, aside from Pokemon. Um, probably since I got back into gaming. I guess, like, I think Skyrim was, like, my first. Is, is Skyrim an RPG? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I didn't play games for, like, 10 years. And then um, I played Skyrim on a beat-up old laptop. And it was the best thing ever. So, I, I like, I love Skyrim. I love Fallout. So probably those, like, Pokemon aside... Yeah. I'd say those. And then Pokemon Arceus. Would that be considered an RPG? Because that's probably one of my favourite Pokemon games. Yes, I would, I would say that was an RPG. I not haven't played it, but going by what people say about it. Yeah, yeah. even no, with the I mean... little extra open worldy bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if you, if you break down what Arceus is and what the rest have done, you run around, you catch Pokemon, and you can do the story when you feel like it. Um, effectively, all the other Pokemon games are the same thing. You know, you have your main things, do here, do X, Y, but in between that, run around, catch stuff. 
make little happy yeah, creatures side quests. fight each other's. You know, ex again, exactly. There is so many side quests in that game compared to the others. <laughs> to be fair, in fact, I'd, I'd argue Arcus is probably more RPG than the others. Thinking mm. about it, but I think that you know, it's this. This is going to be a question that's never ever going to get solved, <laughs> no matter how many people try. We've spent the past hour discussing RPG yeah. and everything in between, and <clears throat> you know, we're no closer to having the definitive answer. Like to me, like I said, to me, if someone says RPG, I'm like, cool, turn-based tactics kind of thing. Excellent, I'm in. To someone else, it might be, oh, something like Horizon. Mm -hmm. um, granted, we yeah. do have the slight deviations. Like if someone says loot shooter, you know you're in for an RPG game, but with gear and, you know, looting and well, shooting, would you believe? Yeah. Um, so, you know, they've all got their own different offcuts. And I think that's probably the best thing about it is that we do have the offcuts names. Like, again, case in point, like I just said, with loot to shooter, you know it's going to be an RPG. You also know what you're in for. If someone says, um, it's a turn-based RPG, immediately you know exactly what kind of game you're in for. And I think that that's probably the way it's just going to be now. Um, RPG doesn't mean anything anymore. It will be the subsidiary name yeah. of RPG is what will define the game it is now. Yeah. No, I think no, that's no, probably I... the closest Sorry. we can get to and hope for at this point. Yeah. <laughs> no, I completely agree. I think it's because it's got so big now, you, you have to break it down into subcategories. And that's not a bad thing at all, because then like people can, rather than doing, trying to do all of these things to come under the umbrella of RPG, then go, right, cool. We're going to be a this RPG. Like again, going back to what you just said, Loot Shooter, like I played Borderlands and had my mind blown. I enjoyed that game so much and I still do whenever I play it. Um, because they went, right, what are we going to focus on? Yeah, we've got the RPG, some are bits of RPG DNA in there somewhere, but our big thing is going to be bonkers gunfights and more loot than you can carry. Uh, and they did that so well because they were just like, this is what we're going to go and do. And, and eventually that happens to everything that starts out, I guess, kind of niche and then grows. Look at horror movies now so many movies have kind of come under the banner of horror but horror is now broken down into so many subsets heavy metal music started out as just kind of metal was a, like a handful of bands like all came under metal the whole thing movement grew more and more bands got influenced more and more things came under the metal umbrella and now we have all of the subsets of metal music um, and I think we're just watching that happen with RPGs. It's just happening incredibly fast because it's happening alongside technology, which obviously accelerates a huge rate. And we've been lucky enough to be around to see some of things start in their infancy and start sprinting. Like, I grew up like with no internet in the house, for example. That wasn't a common thing at all wasn't common for people to have like a one home computer um we had i had dial up and now i can essentially with pressing my button to clicking on being able to have all the information that i ever want is 10 seconds from powering up the pc to being able to access anything i want um and so yeah i think things that happen within that such as video game rpgs are going to grow and at an accelerated rate and so you, we are going to just start seeing these these sub genres break down to give us a better idea of okay it's an rpg but what kind of rpg is that hmm. yeah i'd agree yeah 100 mm -hmm. yeah okay well um i think well the one of the to make it a nice little easy question to roll out on because i've been told off by the editors quite a few times mm -hmm. with this now we'll go around the room what would be your personal rpg that you would for someone to like get them into the series almost like to get into rpgs like as a whole or to like yeah so like if it was adventure. if someone said oh what, what what would you recommend to me to try as an rpg like would you say here pokemon it's easy mechanics it's you know this is how effectively they start mm -hmm. out or would you you know for me uh, like for you um if i can use an example for pommy um you know pommy had mainly played pokemon games and she likes them so i was like well you like rpgs and you like some of the weird stories i play of games i said try octopath i said it's turn-based rpg just like pokemon is and you know you've got that story that builds and builds as you go and in a way i used octopath as a gateway rpg for pommy <laughs> yeah 
to get more like a turn-based side of things. Yeah, I guess it's basically it's it's kind of you introduce them to a simplified uh, part of the RPG thing, right? So uh, if you want to get someone used to the fact that like you have to make choices, for example, in RPG games, or and you want to go a light version, I'd probably suggest people like maybe the Fable series um, because it's it's it has RPG anima- elements, but they're all very light. And then people will naturally, if they enjoy doing that, they're like, okay, cool. I, I've got the grasp of this. I'll move on to another game that has that, um, like has these RPG elements. But, oh, these seem a little bit more complicated, but I've got the confidence now from playing that game. That I have a rough idea of how this will work. Um, and that will then lead them down their road. I mean, I know they're all they're broken and buggy, but like Bethesda games are always a good gateway because they they take time to get used to but you can just kind of jump in and start doing what you want so again it kind of like opens up very early in bethesda games are you able to just run around and do whatever you want you go wherever you like so if someone's looking for something like that like maybe a bethesda game where you could just have that freedom just go wherever you're like oh cool i don't care about the story i'm going over here that can be intimidating though i think oh yes definitely um i i think it would very much depend on what like the person is is into like if they're an yeah. fps person for example i'd maybe introduce them to something like borderlands because it's fps it's what they know but it has these skill trees and if you bother to sort of build your skill trees in certain ways it can be so much f- more fun to play it adds so much more to the combat that they'll or be like okay. so i'll just break characters with the skill trees Sorry. Yeah, I said, or as Tommy has seen, I just break characters with the skill trees because I'll look at all the things and it's like, if this does this, this will connect off that, and then that will bounce for this, and then oh, chaos ensues. But Borderlands <laughs> Two was the best for that. Borderlands mm. Two was yeah. so good. Siren builds on Borderlands Two were so broken. Oh, I had maybe. like, I had a Have siren you build three properly. <laughs> I mean, Cause... there are mm. there are absolutely broken builds for three as well. To be honest. Mm. Um, I don't know, there was something... I still argue to this day, though, with Borderlands, though. This is just Borderlands sidebar. Mechanics, the best one is 3, because I really love the the skill trees in 3. Mm-hmm. But Agreed. the best story was 2. Um, I yeah. think the best com- combat, gunplay, and skills was 3. Mechanics-wise was so good. They'd done it for 3 games. Um, they had that down to a fine art. Um, but unfortunately, I felt the story fell a bit flat in 3. And it's really hard to come off the back of someone like um, Handsome Jack, who's probably one of the greatest like video game villains of all time, in my opinion. Agreed. Oh, that was a difficult one, because there's, there's what I want to suggest, but it's not, definitely not for a beginner. It is definitely not for a beginner, so I'll say that. But if you want a, an RPG that gives you a sort of semi-freedom of choice to how the plot will play out, I know, it's, it's, I know Pengi, you don't like this game. I'm going to say Fallout New Vegas. Because it, it's, oh. again, a Bethesda mm. game, so you know, it's familiar surroundings, but it has the most flexible plot there is, okay. as in um, th- 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 there are three factions which do drastically change the way the game plays out. You can decide okay. with... I can't remember who the factions are off the top of my head. There's a but few yeah. more than three, bud. Yeah, there's a few more than three, but you, you know what I'm saying. It, it, it's... Choices do matter. Your, your skills matter, because you know, as a, if you level up your... Um, charm you get extra dialogue if you if, if you if you dump your intelligence you literally have hidden dialogue options which are, are, are the dumbest responses ever <laughs> you know so I love if you that. yeah um so yeah i've done that in um i believe every fallout game has that if you have next to zero intelligence um in the first i fallout, think it was example, unique to uh new vegas no 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 because there, there was one in there was, was one that? in 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 fallout one oh, 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 fallout zero one, yeah, oh yeah you can say if you have bomb. zero intelligence and that someone talks to you, you can literally reply with, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's but... literally your reply. <laughs> but, that is it. You don't speak. <laughs> yeah, but the, but the, the cl- classic Fallout games and the new Fallout games are two sets, totally separate beasts. Let's face it. But New Vegas was developed by the guys who did the originals. That's why I'll, New Vegas is the, you know, I won't even say modern day convenience because even now it's, it's getting on. So, yeah, I mean, for a new commercial, you want to change, you know, change the outcome of a plot. Yeah, New Vegas. However, if you're looking for a 
hardcore RPG experience. We're talking No Mercy. I would recommend Kenshi. It is essentially a single player MMO. It has no plot. It has no plot. You can pick any character. You, you, you build your character from the, from the ground and can be anything. You can be a trader, you can be a warrior, you can be anything. My first experience was, uh, I was a miner in, in the wild. I got caught by a, a roving gang of bandits. I was forced into indentured servitude, tried to escape, and had my arm cut off. <laughs> but the game didn't end there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could just live out my life. It was like, oh my god. If you don't mind restarting it again and again and again, it's a really good, like, almost do anything game. Mad. Yeah, That's very and it was, cool. it was designed by one person. Really? It's, yeah. It's very uh, similar to another game in the same kind of vein called Outwards. Ah. Uh, oh, yes. Which is very, very similar in the here's your thing, go, mm -hmm. do what you want, but your consequences will have action. Yes. No, your actions will have consequences. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, off, off the back of your Fallout, like if you're going down the Fallout route mm -hmm. uh, as like a gateway, I would probably say Outer Worlds over Fallout. Mm -hmm. um, just because things are a little bit more simplified in certain, yeah. like ammo, for example, ammo check in much more simplified mm -hmm. your choices very much will make the biggest impacts of yeah. whether you want it to or not for example like the starting planet do you help the fishery yeah. or help the other people you help the other people you've just damned an entire planet yeah 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 that's fair awesome game though yeah and, and it's got that the... humor to it as well which is good to <clears throat> oh yeah people sort of made by the and... same people oh yeah <laughs> the original fallout people yep ah. If I was doing an introduction, I'd definitely, I'd, I, you know, I, no, I genuinely would stick with um, Octopath as my choice, just because it's, you know, you pick one of eight people, you get to meet up with the rest of them, and if you like this, well, you don't have to, you know, you, you pick one character to start with, then you see their story through to the end. As you pick up your other companions, you can then choose to go see their stories to the end. You can do it whatever order you want, but you just explore, gather your team, get stronger, and yeah, it's, I think it's a nice little gateway to turn-based RPGs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about El Pommy? Yeah, I don't know if the game is too complicated, but I think Baldur's Gate 3. Mm -hmm. They just do the whole thing so well. No, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, your choices make a difference. It affects how people treat you. You can go into your character's back, um, your companion's backstories or mm -hmm. not. The mm -hmm. skill leveling. I don't know if it's complicated with the D&D &D rules in it, whether that might scare people off. but You, you learn not to trust the dice. Oh yeah, no, we don't trust the dice. <laughs> Never trust the dice. They will always, always betray you. <laughs> yes. But I think, like for for me, that's like a it's a classic representation of what an RPG is like yeah. in modern games, like on a modern platform. Personally, yeah. and just I think like because the voice acting and everything is so brilliant, it's just a really good game. Everyone should play Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> <laughs> if you like Baldur's Gate three, you'll enjoy Torment uh, one and two. You'll enjoy. Divinity, original Sim 1 and 2. They're really good. Fight of Numeria, is it? Yeah, that's another one. Again, all very much tabletop RPGs as video mm -hmm. games, and they all do the same thing of, here's all the things you can do, but uh, the Divinity ones was the same devs that did Baldur's Gate 3, so I yeah, think you Larian. probably would enjoy uh... Divinity a lot more. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I still need to try Disco Elysium, but that's really good. I've, I've seen a few people things. playing that over the last couple of weeks, actually. Notice that's been doing the rounds again for some reason. I need to play Nino Cooney because cats. <laughs> cat RP I have some cat RPGs on my Steam that were like made by indie devs, and they they are quite quite adorable. Uh, so on that note, thank you to K of Double K for joining us today. Where can we find you, and what do you do? Uh, I do the stream thing on Twitch uh, Monday to Friday from ten AM UK time. DST at the moment, I believe. Uh, and you can find me all on socials at K of double K with, well, K underscore of underscore double underscore K. Um, it, I wasn't thinking how much, how difficult it was going to be to say out loud at the time. <laughs> and I've, been, and I've been doing it for a few years now, is what I've got. So, but yeah, you can find me there. I probably could have told you this first, Anne, but um, we will also put your links in the description so they will be able to see that. Mm hmm. But I also hope you do not cut any of that out, Scruff, please. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, and Pommy, whereabouts can we find your lovely self? Uh, you can find me on Twitch mostly, um, Twitter, etc., um, as Meggy Pom. Um, sometimes on Twitch, I, well, I will be restarting streaming cat games and photography. 
you can find me under Pom Pom Photography on Instagram and Facebook, where you can see some of my photographic work, if you so fancy, or pompomphotography.com, because Lovely. I am getting back into that stuff. So, Lovely stuff. And of course, dear Scruff, we ask all the time, but we have to. Where can we find your lovely self? Currently sitting behind you. Don't turn around. Oh, scathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what Scruff means, he always lives here. <laughs> <laughs> we just turn up. Uh, you can find me on the Twitches, or on, you can see my work on the TYG YouTube and on the TYG website, treatyourgeek.co.uk. And yes, so thank you all for being here and having a lovely chin waggle session about RPGs, trying to fix the world of RPGs, and we did not succeed. Mm -hmm. We did not have enough <laughs> um, insight checks for that, apparently. Mission successfully failed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I had a we good time, a so I had yeah. it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and as always, I've been Pengi. Uh, you can find me also on Twitch, uh, also on the website, writing things, and occasionally in the YouTube space doing things under the Treat Geek banner. But until next time, Tiddle Pip, keep safe and love you all. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.